Hey there friends on YouTube, it's the JTL, I'm back again, and today I'm going to talk to you about a review. A review that I promised when I did an unboxing. When I did the unboxing, I said I was going to do a review. I said I was going to take some time, I was going to use the headphones, and that's what I have done. And so today we're going to get that review. What's the review of? The HyperX Cloud Stinger. The HyperX Cloud Stinger. So, I've been using these for the past couple of weeks as I've been trying to not suck at Battlefield 1. And while they haven't helped me not suck, they have been, uh, spoiler alert, somewhat surprising. Let's just walk around the headset and talk about what they are, and then uh, we can talk about what I like and what I don't like. So, it's an, we got an all-plastic build here. A little bit of metal in the headband here. Decent amount of travel on the headband, so that's good. And we've got uh, the one thing, the ear cups are large with a large opening, which is good. Ears sit in there comfortably. This nice <laughs> premium leatherette. It says premium leatherette on the, on the box. The premium leatherette is very comfortable and I haven't found myself feeling uh, sweaty or hot or anything like that. These are closed back headphones. And honestly, the microphone is, is pretty darn surprising. Now you can hear that. It's mute when it's up and talk when it's down. It does have some play to it so you can adjust it, but it, you know, it's basically if you put it down around the, you know, right here along the chin line, the jaw line, uh, you'll be picked up fine and you won't be breathing straight into the mic. The mic sounds surprisingly good for, did I mention that these are $49, $49 and change? Which is, is a super impressive. Before Let's get into the pros of why I like these things. Oh, they do have nice, nice sort of premium leather padding. They are comfortable and they are light. You've got some HyperX branding on the headband. You've got the HyperX logo on either side. First and foremost, these sound surprisingly good. I actually went back and forth last week and I got a video on my... I got a, I got a video of me playing Battlefield 1 wearing both these at times and the Sennheiser PC373Ds that I also have in for review. These guys are punching well above their weight in terms of sound. My one complaint, and it's not really a complaint about gaming, I did listen to a little bit of music with these, and the bass was a little heavy and a little thumpy without a lot of definition in listening to music, but I don't think I would really listen to music with these guys. These guys, uh, you know, they're a good cheap headphone that you can keep around your console or, you know, just move back and forth and they work really well. Uh, but once in game, that bassiness sort of went away and everything was tight. Everything sounded great. And yes, it's stereo, but three is a 7.1, 5.1 surround in headphones. You have to understand what you're getting. You're not getting real 7.1 or real 5.1. You're getting a stereo approximation that's achieved through the magic of technology. Dynamic sound processing is what it's called. DSP, anytime you hear anybody talk about DSP, that means dynamic sound processing. And that's how you get that 5.1 or 7.1 sound. These guys are straight stereo, but directionality in, in a game like Battlefield 1 was great. Uh, I really had no problem hearing anything. I, you know, I usually, if you've watched my videos, you know that I don't gush over just about any product. But these guys, they blew me away. Uh, and, and I would have been impressed with these if they cost twice what they were asking for. A couple other things that I really liked about them. I mean, the mic, it, it does sound good. You can go back and watch my unboxing and mic test to hear what the mic sounds like. It really sounds nice. Now there's no side tone, so you can't hear yourself talking, but these are not, there's no software in these guys. That's where you would get the, so, the side tone. There's no software. So you're just, you're just getting a very simple headset. The quality of the build is nice. It does come with an extension Y cable, 
so that you can use that if you're going to use them on PC. And I recommend using them on PC too. They are a simple, great sounding headset. You've got your volume control here too. I forgot to tell you that. I usually don't use it though because I just turn it up and I'm good to go. Uh, one of the problems that you always have with the PS4 is whether or not you'll get enough sound from the PS4. I don't know if it's the amp that's in the DualShock 4 or if it's the system itself. You, you max out the headphone volume and sometimes you don't get enough. Sometimes you get just enough. You never get too much and these guys give you just enough. So I have a feeling that HyperX really looked at the ohms rating that they needed, the power that they needed to drive these headphones so that they could be great. Uh, another, other things that I don't like, I mean, uh, they're, they're a little big. And, and really, like, if you look at them on the box here, you, you get a sense that they're a, they're a big headset. And they don't look quite as big in real life, IRL as they say. But there's not a lot, I mean, they're just big and sort of bulky. And that's not necessarily, it's not a functionality thing, but I don't know. I prefer to have, I think the corners that were cut here were some of the design cues that maybe in the HyperX Cloud series with the aluminum, uh, with the aluminum attachments here on the earpieces and all that. I think they just went bare bones. I wouldn't be surprised if they had the same drivers and the same microphone and they just used cheaper materials to make these and that's how they hit the $49.99 price point. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something that looks premium, <laughs> then these are not in it, but they're, they're clean looking and durable. So I guess that's, that's really, if you're on a budget, what you're looking for. Overall, if you haven't already figured it out, I would, I would give these guys, let's see, what grade do I wanna give these guys? I'm gonna give them a four out of five. A four out of five, a B, even a B plus. And I'll tell you why. I'm gonna give them a B plus because they do everything that they need to do right. They sound great in game. The microphone sounds great. They're pretty comfortable. They do everything right. And they do it at a price that's right. I mean, if you're looking for a relatively cheap headset, then you can't go wrong with the HyperX Cloud Stinger. You really can't. And if, like I say, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I don't hesitate to slag a, a headset. I don't at all. Um, and these, I bought with my own money. I mean, it's 50 bucks. And yeah, I think they're awesome. So let me know what you think. Have you tried these guys out? Have you done anything with other headsets that you would put in that, you know, price, Pound for pound, great sounding headsets. I mean, Turtle Beach has never released anything that comes close to the comfort and the sound quality of these guys. Turtle Beach has never reached this, not even in their higher end stuff. They give you features, but they don't give you quality. That's what HyperX does. It, it goes low, low down on the features and high on the quality. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe because I'm doing this stuff all the time and I'd really like to know what you guys think. Thanks for being here. And until the next time, this is the JTL and I'm out.